Hey, what up? This is Joe. And this is David. And we're, we're dead. dead. And you're watching Metal Nexus. right in so uh the the new single uh, anti everything's top and list spotify apple music um sirius xm uh, did you immediately know the song was going to be the single when you recorded it in all honesty actually yeah john talked about it in his kitchen uh, we did it with feldman and after three days of writing it he was in his kitchen he's like i think this is the single so. what was it that stuck out about it Probably the message and the there's like two choruses in it kind of. And, it's anthemic too. It's anthemic. It really involves the crowd. Yeah, it's very melodic and um, it just got a good groove to it. Yeah. I and mean, there's other songs that I think could be singles too, but that one just seemed like there was just a really good energy with it, and it was it was a single, but it was still heavy, and that yeah. was very important to us. We didn't want to like go with our to, metal songs on radio right away. Yeah, like yeah. Our, our heavier stuff might be too heavy for the radio, and then there's. Maybe a song or two that could go on, but we wanted something that was still heavy, that was catchy. It was like a good, all-encompassing sound of all of our yeah. styles. Now, uh, what message do you, lyrically do you want fans to take away from that song? From that song, it, yeah, that's one of those things. Like you could look at it as maybe as like a bonehead, you know, type of thing, but it's not at all. It's, it's just it, it's not a negative thing necessarily, even though it is from an angry place. It's just about being an individual. It's like it's like putting your hands up. Like I can't be a part of a lot of these things, you know. Um, I don't want to be labeled anything. I don't want to be in a box. I don't want anybody else to feel that way either. You want to speak for yourself. Don't let anybody else speak for you. Don't be a part of a, a group that speaks for you. You know, like you're an individual. You're special in your own way. That's what it's about. And the video was produced by Fred Durst, right? Yeah. Yes. So how'd that come about? Uh, our manager used to manage with Biscuit oh, yeah? during yeah. Their, like their whole career. So um, he had a, he was in contact. He hit up Fred. And then uh, Fred was into it. He liked the song, and it all came down. He yeah. even told us, he's like, if Fred doesn't like it, he won't respond. Yeah. And we're like, dude, that's fine. You know, like, yeah. let's see, put it up to the Pe yeah. Pepsi Challenge. Yeah. So uh, he has up, and he's like, dude, love it. You know, he, we got on a phone call, and uh, <laughs> like just hearing his voice on the phone, I was like, yo, that's Fred Durst. <laughs> it yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when we first were on the phone, uh, we did like a three way, my manager, like, like he's like, hey, I got to call David. And hold on. Yeah. Just me and Fred Durst on the phone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> it's like, we didn't really even do an introduction. I'm like, what's up, man? We're just in a phone. So anyway, and then he, he ended up being just a, just a bro. He like, just bros down right away. Like, he yeah. was just really, like, just, he's probably one of the most easygoing people, you know, from thinking of what you might think when you're going to meet Fred Durst. He was like, what up, dude? How's it going? Da -da -da -da. And we just clicked right away. We actually, we're going to do the next two videos with him. Oh, yeah, we already awesome. booked him just because we loved him so much. He's, like, the best director that's ever worked with a video that I've been a part of. I, I love the so, video too. Like, I mean, the concept. I don't know if that was his idea or your idea, but it, yeah, it went well. Him, it's yeah. he has a vision. He's a visionary guy. I think he can see stuff that other people can't see. Almost, he's really intelligent too. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know what you think about him. He's an intelligent guy. I like him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he's like a great stage performer. Dude, like, regardless yeah. what anybody thinks about his music, right. yes. he captures a crowd the way that his presence is on stage. So the cool part is during the video, he he sets up these screens where when you're Playing, the camera's filming you, but there's a screen playing it back, so you can see it. Yeah. And he came out and he's showing him. Which he's so like, beneficial. dude, like you can do this. This is how you can control. He starts doing the moves, and like I can see on the screen, I'm like, dude, he just knows how to own that screen. Like yeah. he just jumped right into character. Like, like it's he, really he cool. Big, yeah, he was big on do whatever your body wants to do. Don't try to do what you think you're supposed to do. Just just while out, you know. And it was it was really cool. Yeah. So uh, I know the uh, the tour with Corn was has been canceled or postponed, right. and that was with Stone Sour. So no, no, that was that was the original or the one. The first one, yeah. the second one. The second one was Corn and Stone Sour. That was and then that, that, that one will still be in that one's still, still be on in July. Uh, so are are you? Uh, what are you doing now that those those dates were canceled? Uh, we're going out with Animals as Leaders, who was on the tour with us anyway. Um, so we're going out with them. We're doing uh, Brooklyn, uh, St. Vitus Bar. Two, two, the first one sold out. We're doing two with them. And then uh, all that remains, some dates. Just kind of filling in throughout all that. We're going to Rock on the Range. We're going to Rock in Oklahoma. <coughs> going through all the uh, Point Fest. We're going through all the festivals. So just do, trying to do some clubs and whatnot in between. All the bands that were opening on the corn tour that got postponed, yeah, we kind of got worked together yeah. to where the three of us are just playing shows on and off to fill in all the dates together. So it's kind of cool because if it, you know with the corn tour just postponed, we just added new dates. Now the the debut album set to come out July 14th. 
Um, we've already heard anti everything and FM FY. Yeah. Um, what else can we expect from that album? A lot. You, you watch the set, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So but it's, it's probably a little bit heavier than than anti everything is, right? Like mostly. Right. Like you said, I think that's a radio friendly song. And yeah. Everything else others. cranked up and on. And there's some more, other yeah. uh, there's some radio stuff. stuff on there. Like, you know, I don't want to use the word radio, but we just, you know, there's times to pick your battles on when you want to be brutally heavy Normal. and when you want to. We really like the groove stuff, so you yeah. can't always groove when you're just going hard. So we try to ride the line, and I think, honestly, we just listened to the CD for the first time all the way through on the drive out here. We had the mastered final version, which we've been working on the record for two and a half years. So it was kind of like therapeutic to be like, it's done, dude. We're not going to change it. Nothing's going to go. And I loved it. But all the flavors I was telling him, I was like, dude, every song is like its own thing. It's not like there's no, no two songs where you're going to go like, that song is the same as that song. They just did the same thing three times. Now, is there a plan to release another single or video before the album yes. drops? Do you know what the name of it? Can you tell us what it's going to be? Uh, I, I, was to say, uh, I don't think we're supposed to say it. I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, we can't say it this time, but it'll be out soon. Okay. Video with Fred Durst, too. Okay. Yeah, we'll another video with Fred. So, uh, FMFY was inspired by Matthew McConaughey's character on True Detective. Yes. yes. Right. So, is there any other songs that were inspired by other forms of media, like uh, other you know musicians, songs, music, TV? I, th I, I mean, I think indirectly, <laughs> media for sure, just in general. Right? right. I think indirectly, yeah, just your life. Your, you you consume things whether you like it or not. It gets into you in some way, shape, or form. Your experiences, your surroundings, your environment. So I'd have to say it's all influenced by everything, you know, because we're way into horror movies and stuff, and we're way yeah. into trying to make. We like the feeling of that. We're, we're b very big on vibrations, feelings, like vibes, energy more we, so. We want to just feel how I feel. Like if I watch The Shining, I feel sick after it, you know, whatever. Yeah. I want to feel that way with the music. So I'm trying to think of other. I mean, other than that, I mean, that is very direct in a lot of ways for us. But, yeah. So you said you're a big horror movie buff, right? Yeah. What do you think about the new Hit movie? We're so stoked. It looks awesome. Right? We're in a hotel in New York. We're both like huddled up on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> just like, like we watched it like two or three times in a row. Uh, I've watched the trailer like 30. I got a Pennywise <laughs> tattooed on my leg. Oh. So, oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, so I'm really stoked to see it, and you know, with with the way cinematography has changed since the first one came out, I mean, it's you know, it's when he's shaking coming out of the water, I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got like it's all, all like a whole like horror movie. I got like Jaws, all Jaws, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Oh, you can't see it, but anyway, I got Gizmo and uh, Stripe and a bunch of that stuff. Man. Now uh, you stated that the band really started just as a fun band to play some dive bars and yeah. stuff, and then. Uh, you realize, you know, well, we're really doing something here, and you start getting popular and stuff. At what, what moment did you realize that it was becoming uh, more than just fun? I think, like, the uh, actual moment, it's probably different for us. I was going to say, for me, I don't know if there's a moment moment. What's your moment? No, yeah, it was a gradual thing. I think, I think like, we had done it, we were just, we liked it, yeah. and we showed it to some buddies, and they were like, whoa, this is cool, man. It's cool to hear you guys do it. The sound, and this, this sounds like whatever it sounds like. And we just sent it to just some friends that are music people that are in the music industry. Um, and then they sent it to people, and then it just it just went crazy, and then we started getting calls from labels okay, and managers. So that would be my I moment. I feel like that time where it was like, I had why is everybody where, freaking out about this? We recorded these songs alone. I'm like, we did like six songs just in my studio, and I loved them. And we were like, you know, like, we were talking about like, yo, dude, I just like listening to this. I don't even care if we ever release it. This is just fun that we did this. Right. Um, and then we sent it to just a couple of people that, like he was saying, like, you know, small people like at, like, you know, friends and not, no, like, big wig nah. dudes or anything. We didn't try to shop it. And yeah. then there was a week where I was getting calls from New York and management companies and L.A. And I was just, like, sitting on my phone being like, yeah, dude, I think we might actually have something here that's, yeah. you know, I just think we have Other a chance. Other people like this, too. Yeah. But, and I'd say all, we, yeah. all I thought is we might have a chance because even coming out to Carolina Rebellion and doing what we're doing now, there's always the question mark in the next however long. But it was kind of cool just to be like, I think we might actually be able to make a record at least, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, not only with just your music and how great it is, you know, recorded, but I mean, did you see how many people is out there for your set today? Yeah, Dude. we didn't expect yeah. that. I think you're going to get a lot of fan attention wherever you go with your performance. Yeah. As great as you sound live, I think a lot for a lot of bands, it's hard to get that same studio sound in a live performance. Yeah. But I think you all are able to do that. Thank you. Awesome. That's, Thank you. That's a compliment, yeah. Now, uh, the album's going to release on Sure Tone Records, right? right. Yes, sir. Now, they, uh, one of the guys with him, I can't remember his name right now, but he's got, you know. Saeed? I think so. Yeah. Rapper? Is he a yeah, rapper? rapper? Or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Saeed. Now, like, uh, they yes, have yes, 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 yes. <laughs> they have a reputation of really propelling bands and yes. stuff. Yes. Now, as a band, 
getting together, have you set any goals for yourself? Um, well, what do you really want to do? Or? Absolutely. Um, I would think just goals, sky's the limit, do it for forever, right? Like, I don't really know what comes in between that. I just want to play music for forever. I want to record music. I'm going to record a lot. Be I'd able to do it and make it our living and, like, just really focus on it and do it the best we can. Yeah, and then do, do music justice. That's what we try to do. I don't want, right, necessarily because I think it's so cool. I love paying homage to all my favorite bands and trying to do something that gives me that energy that we're talking about when I listen to Slipknot. And it makes me want to run through a brick wall. It makes me want to write a song that makes you want to run through a brick wall. Right. Um, and I was go back to you uh, talking about the shirt tone. That's Jordan Sure. He's part of our goals. I think he makes bigger goals for us than we even dream about for ourselves. Yeah, he's a uh, he's also a visionary and he does he's his thing. Man. And is it important to have somebody like that behind you pushing you, dude? It, it is like it, he he's a workaholic like us, which is great. He calls us at like twelve in the morning or like one in the morning. He's like, "Yo, yeah. I want to talk to you about this song for like an hour." He reaches out that. all the time. That's I've never do. had anybody reach out as much as he does. Yeah, and constantly, dude, he like was, two, 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 two to three to, times, sometimes a day. Yeah, like put out like a lot of a lot of huge. I mean, he was like the president or whatever of Geffen for a long time. Right. He did Flip with Fred. They did Puddle of Mud and Stain, and he's overseen Green Day and Blink and all these big albums. So he knows what it takes to put you where you need. Go, and he's so um, so smart, and he's so good about being genuine about it. Yeah. And he knows that it has to be real, or it will never resonate with people. It's yeah. great to have somebody in your corner that's truly passionate about your music. Yes. and I, it sounds it's like a that's what you have. Yeah. Never, yeah. never had somebody like him before. He's he's a friend too. He's a yeah. good guy. We love him. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, again, Dad's debut album comes out July 14th. That's the same weekend as uh, Chicago Open Air, so make sure to come out and see them then. Yes. Pick up the album. Uh, they're also going on tour with Animals as Leaders. Um, and where can they visit you to get more information about that? Facebook is official, uh, Dead Official. D E D, by the way. Dead Official. Um, Instagram's also Instagram's Dead, Dead official. official. And then Twitter is We Are Dead. Uh, yeah, if you haven't so. already checked out the singles, make sure you do and get a dose of Dead. Um, you really can't go wrong with it, guys. I want to thank, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And uh, good luck on this upcoming tour. Appreciate awesome, it. dude. Thanks. Thank you, Billy.